Hey guys! I have been talking to a friend of mine for the last few days and I've been um, trying to coach her through some issues that she's been having and um, one of the things that I believe is happening to her is that her autonomic nervous system is, for lack of a better term, like whacked out. So, um, first of all, you have a parasympathetic and a sympathetic nervous system, and it's confusing to keep it all track, like it's a mess, but basically it monitors your organs, basically your heart, your lungs, your pancreas. So if you end up in a situation where something um, triggers like your fight or flight response, your parasympathetic nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system work together to help your body like funnel energy and blood to the places where it needs to go. So like, and all of that works together with the vagus nerve. So typically people who have heart rate variability issues um, is that could be tied to like a vagus, a vagus nerve or a vagal response. When you breathe in, your heart rate speeds up a little bit. And when you breathe out, it slows down a little bit. And the better or higher your vagal tone, the better that muscle, that nerve is working, then the better the difference between your inhalation heart rate and your exhalation heart rate. So there are things that you can do to tone your vagus nerve, but I wanna talk a little bit more about the symptoms of that. So typically if something happens, like you're in a traumatic event, something happens, whether it be um, like a car accident or a PTSD or even like a concussion, anything that might've happened to you or like if you're stuck in a, a toxic relationship or something like that, you may find that your body reacts what you might call incorrectly, or maybe it overreacts to stimulus that maybe isn't stimulus that should be causing that. So your sympathetic nervous system, so think of it as it's sympathetic to you, is the part of your nervous system that springs you into action. So if your body detects some sort of threat, whether it be a real threat, like you're gonna get hit by a car, or a perceived threat, say you heard a car backfire, and it triggers your adrenaline response, your fight or flight response, then your body will automatically spring into action to whatever it thinks is the, the right action to do. Now, there's a fight response, there's a flight response, there's a freeze response, and there's also a fawn response. And I won't get into all the details, but those are somewhat explicit, like tell you what they are. So your body will send the blood where it needs to go. So if something happens and you need to run, like a dog is chasing you, that's your flight response. Your body instantly sends blood to the areas where it needs to go. It upregulates your heartbeat. It increases your breathing to get blood and oxygen to your muscles so that you have the ability to run. And your freeze response can do the same thing. So does your fight response. It triggers that adrenaline rush that a lot of times you feel your heart will start beating really hard or it feels like it's just going boom, 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 or it feels like it's going really fast. And that is a natural thing. That's the way it's supposed to work. But some people, depending on what's happened to them, their body's health or different things, maybe they need a, an adjustment by a chiropractor, um, their nervous system doesn't switch back to safe mode. So the sympathetic nervous system springs you into action and the parasympathetic nervous system is what calms you back down. 
And some of us have difficulty switching from one to the other in a timely fashion. So you could have something happen to you. Um, say that you're dropping the kids off at school and somebody runs a stop sign and you almost hit them, but you don't. And you're nerved up, wigged out, a mess for a couple hours after that incident. That's not how your body is supposed to react. Your body should react immediately to the stimulus and be like, whoa, that was scary. But you should be able to calm back down within a few minutes of that happening. And if your body doesn't have the ability to do that, it can cause a lot of anxiety. It can cause you to feel like you have anxiety when you maybe actually don't. It can cause you to feel out of control. It can cause you to just feel really upset and nervous and sometimes it makes you cry and some people confuse it with um, blood sugar dysregulation where they think oh I need to eat something because I'm having low blood sugar but that's not necessarily the case and I think in some situations women who have tied this reaction to blood sugar end up gaining weight because they think food makes them feel better and what I'm about to tell you is going to be shocking and you're not going to believe it, but if you are using food to stop this from happening, what it's doing is when you swallow that food, it actually helps relax that vagus nerve. So you're, you're eating as a way to self soothe, but it's not actually solving the problem. It really does help in the moment, but it, that's not the, the way to fix the problem. So this is something that most medical doctors wouldn't necessarily recognize. And it's very difficult for any doctors really to pick this out and say, oh, you must be having a sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system problem. So now that I've explained that, hopefully that makes sense to you. It's, um, it's important if you think this is happening to you to learn how to calm yourself down and get yourself back into a normal heart rate and respiration mode because this particular change where your sympathetic nervous system is kicked in affects your digestion. So you might instantly get diarrhea or you might have constipation because your body just doesn't work right or you may get a grumbly tummy, or you may have some other type, like your mouth might get really dry, or you might find that you have a lot of spit. You might find that your breathing is increased or not increased. You might find that you have to go urinate. So there's a lot of things. You could get heartburn. All of these things are related to that one particular nerve, the vagus nerve. So because of that, if you're one of those people who has, for whatever reason, found that your mood seems to be a little in unstable, that you maybe have some a little bit of depression or anxiety, even things like diabetes, chronic fatigue, not being able to focus, chronic inflammation, or even like cardiovascular disease, or like I said earlier, GI distress, those things could all be related to this nervous system imbalance. And it's really important for emotional stability, resiliency, and longevity to get this figured out. It also can affect blood sugar dysregulation, which is why it affects people with diabetes or can even increase your risk of getting diabetes. So um, if you're one of those people you may find that it seems like it gets triggered for no reason in the middle of the day. Or if you have just a tiny bit of stress, you find that you feel out of control, like you have to have something has to happen right now. Um, Veronica, you're so funny. That's hilarious. Um, but it's something that you need to consider. And this is not a diagnosis, so don't say that it, Annette said, this is what I have. It's something to look into. Um, and you can look up, I found a great article 
um, just by looking up parasympathetic versus sympathetic nervous system. Um, but here's what I'm going to tell you. There are ways that you can correct the imbalance in your vagus nerve by doing vagal exercises. And this is super cool and it's something you can do at home and it does not require any equipment at all. So if you notice that you're having a moment, like you feel like your heart is beating really fast or you feel like you're breathing or you can feel your digestive system getting out of control and you feel that stress coming on, there are some things that you can do. One is take a breath in and breathe out slower than you breathed in. And you can do this five or 10 times. You don't wanna do it in, like to hyperventilate or anything, but just go. And sometimes when that happens to me, I can feel my heart start to go a little faster. I feel that stress coming on. I do that kind of in through the nose, out through the mouth, but I breathe out very slowly. I control it and make it nice and slow. And I'll do that five or 10 times. And while I'm doing that, I'm telling myself, it's okay, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be all right, everything's fine, or whatever you know you need to, like it was, it was an accident, nobody's hurt, like you have to tell yourself, whatever. That can help calm you down and reduce some of that anxiety that you feel. You can also splash really cold water on your face or take a cold shower. It stimulates that dive reflex, which also is attached to the vagus nerve, you can also put ice on your face or you can actually take in a deep breath and hold it and then bear down like you're giving birth to a baby and just do that for a few seconds. That's another way that you can do it. Sometimes you have to do that two or three times in a row. That works really well with that slow breathing also. Things you can do to gain better control, not like in an urgent matter, um, when, when you're feeling stressed is you can start practicing meditation, which is basically just controlled breathing in a quiet place for 15, 20 minutes to an hour, whatever fits into your schedule. It's very helpful for stress and also for stimulating the vagus nerve. You can also do yoga. You can also make humming sounds to help tone. You can also gargle with cold water a couple of times a day. You can also, uh, when you're brushing your teeth, you can accidentally on purpose gag yourself. Um, people who have problems with their vagus nerve typically either have a very, very overreactive gag reflex or a very, very underreactive gag reflex. So if you're a gagger or a no gagger, that could be part of that thing as well. Um, you can also practice speaking very slowly as if you're soothing. So almost like whispering or talking very calmly. You can spend time outside in nature. You can think positive thoughts, of course. Positive affirmations is always a good practice. You can engage in positive social relationships. So get some friends that make you feel good and happy. Um, laugh out loud. Laughing out loud actually stimulates the vagus nerve and it's contagious. It helps other people be happy as well. You can practice prayer, which also goes along with meditation. You can do either and or both. You can also do mild exercise, walking, like I said, yoga. You can get massages and you can really work on things like probiotics and getting a healthy diet to help your body be just healthy in general. So those are some things that you can do if you're finding that you have um, like anxiety that comes on with no possible like onset, like no reason. Or if you are one of those people who is in a situation where you deal with stressful situations a lot, like if you work at a hospital or if you work with children and sometimes you just get really stressed, those are things that you can do to help calm yourself and to work towards staying calm over a longer period of time. I've done the meditation for the last year. Meditation and journaling have really done a lot of good for me as far as anxiety and racing heart goes. And um, the other day I had a little meltdown, a little private meltdown all to myself. And 
what normally would have taken me several days to overcome, I was actually able to overcome it in less than an hour. So I, this stuff does work and it made a huge difference for me. And I was so proud of myself. I called my coach and I was like, you're never going to believe what I just did. I talked myself out of a meltdown and it worked out great. And then I was so elated afterwards. I was like, I did it. I'm so excited. It was amazing for me to actually prove to myself that my practices are working, that I really am making progress and getting where I want to be. Honey, I will totally make a list of these things and drop them in here for you. They, um, I will plop it in there. And I actually got this off of a website, which I will actually also share because it's only fair to share the website that you got this awesome information from. This is a blog that I found online. So I will also drop the blog in here in case anyone wants to do further research. Let's see. Boom. That should, I don't know what it's doing. There it goes. It's in there. So yes, I'll pin it to the top even. Um, so yeah, so if you're one of those people, because I used to be one of those people that struggled with that quite a bit, I have found that those practices have helped me. And when something happens that is a stressful event, I can now calm myself down in a reasonable amount of time, even though I may initially have a little bit too much, I may have an overreaction to something, I've found that I have learned that I can calm it down in a reasonable amount of time. So I sure hope that this is helpful to you. If it is, please let me know. If you need some more information, feel free to ask. Let your friends know, whatever. Um, and remember that we are having that live video on Thursday evening. There's an event in the group. You can join on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Central Time. But I just thought, because we were talking about this earlier today, that it would be a great time for me to address this issue because it is something that I have dealt with in the past. And I know a lot of people do. And it's probably something that most of you have never heard of. And I would be really excited if you try any of the any of these things, if you find success, I would love to hear about your successes. So everybody have a great evening. It's Taco Tuesday. Be careful with all the salt and um, try not to eat too many shells, but enjoy Taco Tuesday. And um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. Talk to you soon.